right, good morning everybody and welcome to today's story time. My name is Teacher Bia, I'm one of the teachers at the Lawrence, and today I'm going to be reading the story of the brilliant Alexa Kennedy. This week we are continuing with our event celebrating Black Voices in STEAM, and we're telling stories of different Black scientists and engineers and innovators and mathematicians, stories that are very often ignored or erased from our history. In addition to that, we put together a resource list that can be found in the description below where you can find resources like children's books, um, uh, both about different black scientists, but also discussing race and how to be anti-racist. We also have a list of black owned bookstores uh, that you can support, as well as some other resources like articles and websites and podcasts to help folks have conversations about race. Also, before we get started, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel, give this video a like if you want to see more story time, but we also have other different kinds of science videos you can explore in our channel as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with today's story. All right, here we are. Today, we are learning about the story of the brilliant Alexa Kennedy. That's who you can see here on this picture. Alexa Kennedy is a medical doctor. We're going to find out a little more about how she grew up and what kind of doctor she is and what makes her so special as a doctor amongst her other peers. All right. So Alexa Irene Kennedy was born in Lansing, Michigan, where she grew up with her parents and her brother. They grew up actually just outside of Lansing and Kennedy and her brother were the only two black students in their entire school and faced some prejudice from both teachers and their peers as well. And maybe you can try to imagine or maybe you've experienced this, what it's like to grow up when you're different from everyone around you. And because of that, people also treat you differently. One of the stories um, that I learned about Alexa is that when she was young, one of her teachers actually for a while would switch her test scores with the lower test scores of another white student in order to cover her intelligence. The teacher didn't want people to know that Alexa was so intelligent. But despite that, their parents were very supportive and encouraging of their success. Well, her parents really taught them about the importance of getting an education. They really valued getting an education and they really wanted to support their kids in doing that. And Kennedy was incredibly intelligent and she was nominated as a National Achievement Scholar in 1967 when she was still in high school. After high school, she went on to attend the University of Michigan and study zoology. Zoology is the study of animals. And during her time there, she faced many obstacles and she even got close to dropping out due to a crisis in confidence. Maybe at a point of Alexa's path during college, after hearing so much from people around her that she did not deserve to be there, sometimes these things start getting to you, right? And at some point, she had a crisis of confidence. She felt like she did not, she wasn't deserving, that she wasn't good enough to stay in school where she was. But she learned about a scholarship for minorities in medicine, and she decided to apply, and she ended up not dropping out, which we should be very thankful for, because she went on to become an incredible doctor. She then went on to receive a medical degree from the University of Michigan Medical School, and she fell in love with neurology. Neurology, as you might have guessed from this picture on the slide over here, is the study of brains. And you can imagine our brains are super complex and they help us speak and sense the world around us and make uh, and think. So it's a very hard field to be part of as a medical professional. Uh, but she fell in love with neurology during her first years in medical school, and she decided to, to pursue a career in something called neurosurgery. Neurosurgeons are doctors that operate on the brain, so they actually open up your head and can fix things inside of our brains. 
So you can imagine that that's something you have to be very skilled and very precise in order to accomplish. And that's the path that she decided to pursue for herself. At that time, there weren't any women or any black people in that field, in the field of neurosurgery. And Kennedy's advisor recommended that she choose another specialty, but she decided to face it head on and she worked really hard to become a competitive candidate. She would read lots of articles, go to lots of co conferences, and always try to stay on top of the latest knowledge on the field. Uh, then she went on to do her internship, which is part of her medical training at the Yale New Haven Hospital, and she became the first Black woman to be a neurosurgery resident in the United States at the University of Minnesota. Dr. Kennedy ended up specializing in pediatric neurosurgery, and you at home might know what that means, right? So a pediatrician is a doctor that takes care of children. And Dr. Kennedy is a very specific doctor for kids. She's a pediatric neurosurgeon. So she helps fixing kids' brains using surgery. She is known for being a patient-focused surgeon and shows a lot of care for her patients. And that is really one of the things that makes Dr. Kennedy stand out. She really, uh, her ability to connect and communicate with patients and provide attentive care really make her stand out as a physician. She really believes in the importance of connecting and talking and getting to know her patients. And it's not true for a lot of doctors. A lot of doctors don't have as much contact with their patients. But Dr. Kennedy tries a patient first approach. She always puts the patient first and she's known to be very, um, close with her patients. She's known to even play some video games with some of her patients sometimes. After becoming a pediatric neurosurgeon, Dr. Kennedy advanced in her career and she became the chief of neurosurgery at the Children's Hospital of Michigan from 1987 until 2001 before she moved to Florida. In that, she also did a lot of research. After she moved, she kept working as a neurosurgeon for a few years before retiring at a different hospital as well. But she had an incredible career that made a tremendous impact in her field. She contributed to a lot of very innovative research, and she also really advocated for doctors to really make connections and care um, for their patients while they're treating them, which I think is very amazing. So I want to end today's story by leaving a quote by Dr. Kennedy and maybe discussing that a little bit. One of our quotes says, the greatest challenge I faced in becoming a neurosurgeon was believing it was possible. You might remember when we were reading her story uh, during her time in college, she got very close to dropping out due to a crisis of conflict. And once again, when she decided to pursue a, a career in neurosurgery, her advisors actually advised her against it, said so no black woman has ever uh, gone into that field. Uh, so it was, maybe it was hard for her to imagine, believe that it was possible for her to achieve what she was trying to set her mind into achieving. But luckily, she went through with it and she persevered uh, despite the adversity that she might have faced. Because I guarantee you that a lot of people also did not believe that it was possible for Dr. Alexa Kennedy to become a neurosurgeon. And yet, she went ahead and proved them wrong by not only becoming a great neurosurgeon, being um, an outstanding doctor that really cares for her patients and is really an example of what good medical care is. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for today's story where we learn about Dr. Alexa Kennedy. We'll be reading more stories about Black scientists throughout this week, both on Wednesday and Friday as well. I want to remind everyone and encourage you to use your resource list below uh, with books and other resources um, geared towards helping folks have discussions about race and how to actively be anti-racist. I uh, also invite you to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more science videos like this one. Make sure to subscribe and give this video a like. But nonetheless, 
Thank you so much for joining me for today's story time. I really appreciate it. Once again, my name is Teacher Bia, and I will see you next time here at the Lawrence I Hope. Bye-bye, friends.